Joining me now, California Congress Congressman Mark Desaunier. He's a member of the House Ethics Committee and a former member of the Rules Committee. Congressman, thank you for coming to the Saturday show. For the uninitiated, what is a discharge petition and what is the viability of what you're proposing? Well, first, thank you, Jonathan, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, without going into the whole details, it's a vehicle, it's a bill um, that would allow the members, a majority of the members, to sign the petition to go around leadership. And leadership right now, Speaker McCarthy, uh, won't bring or may not be willing to uh, bring a bill to the floor that will raise the debt ceilings and avoid all the consequences you just mentioned. So this is a way for us to present an option for a majority of the members of the House. Right. So as I mentioned in the intro, you would need five Republicans to make your plan work, to get that discharge petition out. Have you had any conversations with Republicans about signing on? Well, um, I work with my Republican colleagues. I have friendships with many of them. We've discussed this and some of the things that are going on in their caucus. Um, I think that there are five. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of pressure on them uh, to do what the most extreme members of their caucus want them to do, which I think they want the, want the country to go through this and default on our full faith and credit. Uh, one of the weaknesses for everyone is the calendar. There's not much time left. Are, are people anticipating a short-term deal? Or, to pick up on what you just mentioned a moment ago, are there people, maybe way too many people on the, on the other side of the aisle, who are willing to let um, the, our economic raft go over the cliff? I don't know, Jonathan. I never thought uh, that we'd be in this position. I never thought I'd watch the Republican caucus at the beginning of this session go through 15 votes in five days to select a leader. Uh, you covered all that. That was mm -hmm. a few Republicans leveraging their caucus to go through that. So I don't know. Um, it doesn't. It's incomprehensible to me that they put the country through this. You know, Secretary Yellen warned that the United States could run out of borrowing authority. Uh, around on or around June 1st. Republicans, as you know, have expressed skepticism about her warning. Are there no grown ups in the House GOP who see the gravity of the situation? No, there are. Um, uh, personally, I think if this, this vote for my bill to just raise it cleanly was a secret ballot, like we all vote for in elections, uh, there'd be plenty of Republicans. But they're intimidated by the far right and um, their funders for independent expenditures when they run for primary, is my view. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking, I mean, could you do this by secret ballot? No, not according to the rules that we have. Mm. Um, and that would require the speaker to change those rules, or at least the process. Mm -hmm. And as you say, we don't have time. The, what accelerated this for me, for us, um, was Secretary Yellen's warning of how close we are. You know, President Biden, in his interview with Stephanie Rule, when she asked him about the 14th Amendment, much to my surprise, he didn't take it off the table. Were you surprised by that? And do you think that the 14th Amendment is another viable option? I wasn't surprised. Uh, President mm -hmm. Biden's doing a great job on this. Uh, we're working with the administration. We have to keep all options on. As you, as you referred in the lead into this interview, these are dire consequences. This is not something we're making up to scare people. This is what people like the Treasury Department, Moody's Analytics, uh, Brookings, all these independent nonpartisan groups, or many nonpartisan, have made these the numbers you just gave us. You know, one of the questions um, now uh, that's come up compared to when we went through this in 2011 is the role of Wall Street. Back in 2011, Wall Street was all over Capitol Hill by phone and in person, warning of the dire consequences of default. Do you see the same, the same kind of activity now from Wall Street? Does Wall Street think that a default is possible? I don't think they have the same kind of influence in the Republican Party. The old traditional David Burks, your your colleague mm -hmm. uh, on the news hours, that can, right of conservative pro-business group, that's not what the Republican Party is anymore, as President Biden alluded to. It's not your father's Republican Party. These are very, very, not all of them. That's what we're counting on. We're counting on the responsible ones. But unfortunately, right now, the leadership is leveraged by these very extreme ideologues. 
Mm -hmm. Republicans had no problem adding to the national debt and raising the debt ceiling without conditions to pay for it all under Donald Trump. How do they square their obstinance, their obstinate stance now? It's unbelievable. I, hypocrisy would be a kind word to say to it. As you just said, they were willing to do it under the former president. And, and that a lot of that was driven by a trillion-dollar cut to the top 1 percent in their taxes. That's right.